Hello guys, my name is Paddy and I welcome you to Dem Farm. So over here we show how farms work. So we hit 1000 subscribers the other day and I would like to say a big thank you for I mean watching our videos and deciding to stick with us. We really appreciate this. Yeah, so back to the topic of the day. Um, pig farming of course is a lucrative venture but could also be capital intensive. So if you actually want to do it well and um, scale it, then you need to adapt some highly relevant practices. That's why over here we do not joke with our vaccines and drug addiction administration because even with the proactive measures that we have with regards to our drugs and vaccines we have lost um two pigs over the past months so imagine a farm with no adequate strategy for vaccination but losing some of the animals um of course is part of the game and sometimes it happens regardless and in that case there is no cause for alarm and to be honest you don't really need to be a veterinary to administer drugs and vaccines to your farm animals but it is also very important that you know exactly what you are doing so first you have your private veterinary who you can learn from or get trained so that you don't rather cause havoc to your investment by administering wrong vaccines or drugs to your animals the medication used on our farm here are usually grouped under eight categories from antibiotics all the way to cholesterol supplements but because i don't want this to be a very long video i'm breaking the videos of all these drugs into series and each video would cover the drugs the functions doses and the conservation the first drug that we use here which are featuring in this particular video are the antibiotics and antibacterial substances so antibiotics and antibacterial drugs are used in pigry to help treat or prevent bacterial infection so the antibacterials target bacteria while the antibiotics specifically combat bacterial infection must be noted however because it is very important that the overuse or the misuse of these antibiotics could cause what is known as antibiotic resistance where the bacteria evolve and develop mechanisms that make them less susceptible or completely resistant to the effects of the antibiotics so some of the common antibiotics that you could find in any local shops, um, at least in Ghana, so far as we are concerned, are the Mozivet 10 or 20, the Elm Sofa, the Penstrap, the Mall Penstrap. So these are some of the most common ones on the market. So the first two, which are the Mozivet 10 and the Elm Sofa 33.3 um, are what we use here. So these are the first two we would like to um, talk about. So the first one is the antibiotic, which is the Mozivet 10. So the Mozivet is an antibiotic belonging to the tetracycline class. So it has an oxy tetracycline solution of 10%, which simply means that in every one milliliter, there are 100 milligrams of oxy tetracycline present. So this drug is used for the prevention and treatment of respiratory infection, intestinal infections, and other bacterial diseases. So now we come to the doses, that is how much of it you have to give to your animal. First First of all, this antibiotic would be administered to your livestock or your pigs intramuscularly. This simply means that you have to inject it directly into the muscle tissue using a syringe and needle. So the dosage that we use here on this farm is 20 mg per kg of body weight and that could also be understood as um, 2 milliliters per 10 kg body weight. So to break this down, for every kilogram of the animal's weight, they should receive 20 mg of the medication. So to calculate the um, specific dosage for any animal with a certain body type you simply multiply the dosage rate by the animal's weight in kilograms so for example if your pig weighs let's say um, 30 kg then the calculated dosage would be 30 kg um, times 20 mg so that is going to give you 600 milligram the injection of this drug shouldn't exceed 20 milligram per injection site it is also advisable to know that it should not be administered 28 days prior to slaughtering if you are getting ready or preparing your animals for the market make sure you don't use this drug within the last 28 days before you go to the market talking about conservation it has to be stored below 30 degrees celsius and protected from sunlight the second one we we have here is the Elm Sulfur 33.3 and I think the name of this drug is from the fact that each milliliter solution contains 333 milligrams of sulfur um, dimidine sodium and it contains antibacterial properties and are effective against 
um, a range of bacterial infection. Notably, this drug helps to um, address gastrointestinal issues like diarrhea, gastric ulcers, and it also addresses respiratory and urinary tract infections in pigs. So the administration or the dosage of this drug is also done intramuscularly. So when it comes to the dosage, um, you provide 1.5 to 3 milliliter per 5 kg of body weight on the first day followed by 1.5 milliliter per 5 kg body weight for three consecutive days. And what you must also know is that this particular drug should not be used for more than five consecutive days. Now, with regard to the withdrawal period, it should not be used 15 days prior to slaughter of swine for meat. So the conservation, it has to be stored on between 15 to 25 degrees Celsius and also protected from sunlight. The next one we have are all micronutrients, which are also very essential compounds administered to support the overall health and well-being um, of our pigs on the farm here. And the two drugs or the two micronutrients that we use here on this farm are the Multivita and the M-Ion 10. So the Multivita treats and prevents vitamin deficiencies in pigs and this is the composition of the Multivita. So it is surely highly effective against diseases and infections that are caused by the lack of vitamins like weakness in your pigs, especially the newborn pigs, neonatal anemia, sight disturbances, intestinal troubles, muscle weakness and muscular tremor. I showed you the composition of the Multivita earlier and it simply addresses the fact that if you want to provide a balanced and comprehensive source of essential vitamins and minerals then Multivita might be the right one for your farm. So when it comes to the administration or dosage this one is either done intramuscularly or subcutaneously. So the subcutaneous administration is simply a method of delivering a drug or medication into the subcutaneous tissue which is the layer or tissue just beneath the skin. So you have to administer one milliliter per 10 kg of body weight for five consecutive days. This particular drug has to be stored um, somewhere between 2 and 15 degrees Celsius. So the fourth drug we have um, in this particular video is the M-Ion 10% composition. So with this micronutrient, each milliliter solution contains iron dextran, which is equivalent to 100 milligrams of iron. And it is also very important to know that this drug is given to piglets between 1 to 7 days of age. And the reason is that in that early stage of development in piglets, the M-Ion corrects the development of iron deficiency that leads to anemia, loss of appetite, diarrhea, retarded growth and diminished resistance against infectious germs and changing atmospheric conditions. The M-Ion 10 um, is given intramuscularly or subcutaneously just like the one that we discussed earlier. And with this drug, it is very very important that you know that there are contraindications or issues that could occur after giving the M-Ion 10 to your piglets. So this is what I'm talking about. If your soul or guilt become deficient in vitamin E or selenium during pregnancy, the piglets are also born deficient of what of vitamin E and that same selenium that the souls or the guilt were deficient. And when this happens, the enzymes which metabolize the iron cannot function, and in that case, the iron becomes toxic to the piglets. So when this happens, the muscle surface where the iron has been injected loses all the structure, that is, it becomes hard, and this is due to the death of the tissues around that area. So this is what you do if you encounter such a problem. As soon as the condition is recognized, all the piglets that have been injected the iron within the last two days be injected with vitamin E or selenium immediately. If this is not done, the piglets become acutely lame and a dark swelling occurs at the site of the injection. Usually about 50% of all the litter or the piglets um, who have been injected with this iron may unfortunately um, pass away. So this is what we intend to do. All females due to furrow within let's say seven days are injected with vitamin E and souls within the last month of pregnancy are also injected with vitamin E two weeks before farrowing. So here on them farms, we have not experienced anything like this yet since we are yet even to experience our first farrow. So this is the first part of our drug and vaccine routine on this farm. And like I said, I don't want to make this video too long for you. So watch out for the other parts on the rest of our medication routine. My name is Paddy. This is them farms and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you have found some value in this video. See you in the next video.